Hello everyone, my name is Louis and this is Crash Build. Uh, today we're going to be doing a vlog. Uh, now it dawned on me recently that if I only ever show you work that is finished or projects that are finished, then I'm probably not going to end up showing you very much because some of these things take a really, really long time. So I've decided to do a sort of a tour of uh, what I'm currently working on. Uh, this includes uh, a large size uh, quadcopter frame, um, uses 11 inch props and a uh, run cam split. Uh, it's actually sat right here next to me. This big fella here. You can see that. I've also been doing a repair video. Now this uh, went slightly awry when one of the 3D printed components that were sort of central to the build um, basically just died on me or more. I may or may not have split it in half with a pair of pliers. So yeah, that happened. Um, so that's going to be uh, in the pipeline. Thirdly, for all your, for all you, for all you, for all you, for all you, okay. Thirdly, for all you uh, flight video fans, I bought a Mobula 7, which I have been flying around for like 24 hours and have already broken. So <laughs> I'm gonna get some replacement parts for that and uh, you'll be able to see some flight videos and I will tag those differently from the other videos. So if really all you came here for is flying, then you'll be able to see that um, I'll be setting up some obstacles and tracks and all that kind of stuff, flying outside and indoors. Um, and uh, yeah, that should be uh, pretty fun. The uh, offending article is sat here with me. Very, very fun to fly. Very, very difficult to fly at first because it's extremely powerful, um, at least for indoor work. It's kind of like a chainsaw, like a tiny little air chainsaw, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that kind of threw a spanner in the works ever so slightly, so I will be dealing with that situation shortly and you guys will be able to see uh, me flying around and ripping around and mostly crashing into household objects. Lastly, I'll be talking about a, a lot, kind of a long-term project that I've been working on, um, which is called the Hydra Receiver. Now, the Hydra Receiver is essentially an excuse for me to get into uh, antenna design. It's also an excuse for me to um, get into um, kind of sort of open source product design in a way. Um, it, it kind of wraps in a lot of different skills um, from a lot of different directions all into like sort of one thing. So for me, I mean, I always pick projects that are, uh, that are different, that uh, force me to learn something new. Uh, that are challenging and that are also uh, helpful to someone else. So that last one, um, being relevant to the community and being relevant to um, the industry, you kind of it kind of keeps you grounded because then you kind of think, well, I'm not just going to design this because I can, because there's obviously thousands of things that you can design just because you can. Um, this is more of a, okay, I've noticed that uh, receivers. Uh, multiple input receivers, uh, so like we're talking like f above the three receiver mark, so above diversity, up to like triversity and, and beyond. Um, they tend to get very expensive. Um, the the uh, Overlord being one really great example. So last time I checked, I think it was about 120 to 150 dollars um, for a six input receiver. Now. Those receivers always, to me, have seemed a little bit outlandish, but actually the more I think about it, the more I realize that there is a specific usage case for those. Um, but there are a few things about the design, but also about the way that they're used that I don't really like very much. And I wanted to design something that was uh, A, a lot more portable, uh, B, a lot more affordable, like a lot more affordable, like think like half price kind of level. Um, see a lot more usable and useful. Oh, camera wobble. So usable and useful, we're talking like pit mode. Well, not pit mode, more like spectator mode where you can view like a lot of different um, race feeds at the same time. So if you're, if you're at a race event and you really want to see like a bunch of different pilots do their thing, then you can um, tie in each one of the receivers 
um, for that purpose. But really what I wanted to do was give you a goggle mounted uh, try to, I guess it would be, be hexaversity? So essentially you're looking at a much more affordable form of hexaversity, which I don't think is actually a word, but I, I just invented it if it's not a word. So the idea that you can um, have an antenna array that's covering sort of like this range, like here, here, and here, and then also the same arrangement on the, the uh, back of your goggles. So being able to fly like full 360 degrees around yourself, like a full orbit, whilst also retaining um, the, the coverage of high gain antennas. Um, this is something that I, I think is, if you can do it simply, and if it's not something where you have to like constantly reattach or, or uh, remove antennas, if it has no blind spots, so if there isn't some like horrible blind spot, and there probably is going to be one, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is obviously above your head, because um, you've got like a bunch of sort of panel antennas, or what you want to call them, then uh, surrounding you, then the, you know, the main blind spot is going to be above you. Um, and essentially be able to just rock up, put your goggles on, um, you know, turn the system on, um, start recording, whatever, and just fly without having to worry about uh, setting anything, anything up, um, but also being able to have like great range and great coverage um, irregardless of which direction you're flying in. So sort of marrying convenience um, with a technological solution and also um, optimizing an existing technology like the, like the Overlord. So a bunch of different things happening and obviously I'll be keeping you up to date on absolutely all of these things um, as they progress. Um, much of these things are in like the, the early stages. So the, um, uh, the, the, what was the word? Hexaversity. Hexaversity. Um, system is in its um, PCB design phase and schematic um, design phase. Um, you've obviously seen the uh, quadcopter, the long range quadcopter that is in its sort of middle stages. There's still a few parts that I need for that. Um, I need to redesign the arms, so there's a few things there that need kind of going over. With the Mobula, need new parts again, so I'm gonna wait for those. Uh, that'll probably take a few weeks, maybe. Thankfully, the tripod, I should be able to just start going with really, really soon, because all I need to do is just reprint some parts for that, so that should be no, no big deal, really. Um, so you should see some more content pretty soon. So that's all from me. Thanks very much for watching Crash Build. Remember to like and subscribe. I'm gonna, just gonna keep rotating in my chair because that's, that's what I do best. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I need to think of a better way to end videos.